Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to Spirit to Spirit broadcast. We're here in our home today, and I want to welcome you here by the fireplace to break the bread of life together. This is a beautiful day, a beautiful day to really understand the love of Jesus, to have friendship with God, what that really truly means. And I really believe this is going to be a fiery message to really give you some hope and some meat, the meat of God's word today. Are you ready? All right, here we go. In John chapter 15, verse 14, God says, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. That's important scripture. Think about that. There are many people that God loves, everybody. He loves everybody. But I think about that scripture a lot because I meditate on wanting to really be a friend of God. And in order to be a friend of God, Jesus said, you're my friend if you do whatever I command you. So I'm going to talk to you today about fellowship. It's beautiful. Fellowship with God is so dynamic. It's so powerful and it will change your life. God says when you partner with God and the power of his spirit, it changes everything. In 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14, the word of the Lord is the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I believe as we commune with the Holy Spirit, even today, even as I'm speaking, I'm going to believe that the Holy Spirit is going to break in and he's going to show us how to commune with him more perfectly, more beautifully. We want a continual communication with God. The definition of fellowship is companionship or company or camaraderie. And I believe you can have such a close, intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit, with God, that he will direct you and he will continually show you things to come. Now in Acts 20, verses 22 to 23, there's a, a powerful scripture here about Paul. And he said this, I see, now I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city saying that chains and tribulations await me. Now, the Holy Spirit was speaking to Paul, guiding him and directing him. And that's what I want to talk to you today about, because the Holy Spirit can cause you to go forward or to go backward. In other words, to wait or to move forward. Here in this scripture in Acts 16 verses 6 through 7, we see where the, the Lord was forbidding Paul to preach. So the Holy Spirit can cause you to move forward or he can cause you to wait. And here in Acts 16, it says, now when they had gone through Phrygia, the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. It says that the Holy Spirit actually did not permit them now, wouldn't that be a fantastic thing to have this super ongoing relationship with Jesus at all times and the Holy Spirit that you know when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you? That's what I'm talking to you about today. I'm talking to you about having a companionship with the Holy Spirit and with God that he will actually be your partner. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He'll show you things to come. He'll give you warnings. He'll forbid you to do things or he'll give you a huge green light and tell you to go. Now, there, there is a prerequisite to really truly being led by the Spirit. And this is the key, that you determine in your heart 
that you so want to obey him. You really want to obey him. And like I said before, remember we were talking in John 15, it says, you are my friends if you do what I command you to do. So we want to have a posture in our life of obedience, simple obedience to God. We want to say, Lord, whatever it takes, I'm going to obey you. I'm going to walk with you and I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever you say. And when you have that attitude of saying, God, I'll do whatever you say, and you long to fellowship with him as a person, he will guide you. Oh, he will be a partner to you. In fact, so much so that we find in the book of Acts, here it is, chapter 15, verse 28, it says that it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than the necessary things. In other words, if we're partners with the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit, will work with us so that we will actually know his voice and it will be confirmed in our spirit. You see, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. It, it, it's where the spirit of, of, of man is where the Holy Spirit lives and abides. And so that's why in this particular scripture, it says, for it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us, because the Holy Spirit is living within us. He's always guiding our steps and he will light our path because in our inner man, in the spirit of man is where the spirit of God dwells. Now, some people call it a hunch. <laughs> He's not a hunch. <laughs> He's a person. And we've got to get to know the love of the Lord in order to be in close, intimate relationship with him. If you honor him, he will manifest himself to you. And here's another beautiful scripture about this. In John chapter 14, verses 15 through 18, it says, If you love me, Keep my commandments. Wow, there it is again. That whole thing about wanting to keep his commandments. If we love him, we will want to keep his commandments. And then get this. Jesus said, I will pray to the Father and he will give you another helper, the Holy Spirit, that he may abide with you forever. He is the spirit of truth. And you will not be an orphan. When the spirit of truth comes to live within you, he guides you into all truth. That's so beautiful. And when you respect him, when you honor him and you desire to walk out his will, you will know the secret things of God. I promise you, he will reveal secrets to those that fear him. Now, God gives the Holy Spirit direction to those who want to obey him. And again, I say this is the foundation of intimacy. It's the fear of the Lord. Now, Tom, my husband, has such a great vision. He's a visionary. And for those of you that are here with us in our church, uh, that vision is to be respected. And when he speaks that vision, we as comrades and ambassadors represent that vision and it glorifies God as we represent that vision. Now, it's no different with God. God has a vision for our life. And if we respect God, if we honor him, and we want to be his ambassadors to represent him on this earth, wow, explosive things can happen. When we draw near to God, God draws near to us. And we have this ongoing intimacy, this relationship that continues to cause us to rise above dead religion. Ugh. Dead religion, it's just dry. It's just, this is the way we go to church, go to church, go to church. 
we don't want that in our life. We want this ongoing relationship with God that causes our hearts to burn when we speak to God, when we walk with Him. You know, in Luke chapter 24, verse 13, there were several people that were traveling on the road to Emmaus. And um, the Bible says that as Jesus was speaking to them, this is so powerful, they said their hearts burned within them. Wow. Now I want to share with you something of a testimony about how important it is and what happens when we draw near to God. When we draw near to God, our faith gets developed. We get a pure heart. There is a man by the name of uh, Hudson Taylor. I love this guy. I just love this guy. He was a missionary to China. And uh, this true testimony is that one morning near the end of his life, Hudson was traveling with his family and friends through a, a remote area of China. And it was a very rigorous journey and the entire group was exhausted and hungry. And they were completely out of food and, uh, and could find absolutely none to buy. So while the others started to worry because Hudson fellowshiped with God, he began singing. We thank you, Lord, for this our food. We thank you, Lord, for this our food. What food? His companions kind of gnarled at him. Where, where is it? But Hudson replied with a smile. It cannot be too far away. Our Father knows we are hungry and we'll send our breakfast soon. But you will have to wait and say your grace when it comes, because I've already said it. <laughs> I'm going to be good. I'm going to be eating before you. In other words, he said, within moments, they met a man selling cooked rice and the travelers had a belated but much appreciated breakfast. You see, the Bible says the prayer of a righteous man who is in fellowship with God in James 15, verse 16, is very, very powerful, very powerful and very effective. Now, a pure heart starts with our relationship with God. And what happens when we get in relationship with God and we want to obey him is our faith gets strong. Oh, I do this so often during the day. I just take what I call word breaks and I'll just sit in fellowship and listen to the word of God and let it go into my heart and let it just ring strong and true. It feeds my spirit. It's spirit food. And then I talk to God throughout the day. I say words like, God, help me, or I need understanding, Lord. Show me the direction. Clear the path for me or in your time with God, you may be a bit confused. That happens to me sometimes. And then I talk to God and I say things like, God, I don't get it. And God shows me things to come. You see, the intimacy with the Holy Spirit causes us to lose all fear, knowing that God requires us really to bear fruit. He understands. He knows that we cannot do anything apart from Him. So when we fellowship with Him, when we abide in Him and His words abide in us, we can ask anything that He wills and it will be done. Absolutely, for sure, no way can you miss it. Now in James 4 verse 8, it says, Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, he says, and purify your hearts if we're double-minded. What does that mean to be double-minded? It means to think in your mind, well, maybe God will do it. Maybe he won't. Maybe he'll perform his word. Maybe he won't. No, he performs his word. He watches over his word to perform it. He is an awesome God and he is faithful to his word. Now, that gives us fuel for being able to understand how faith works.
But I also want you to, to know this. Faith works by love. And knowing that God loves us is the fuel for our faith. Knowing that he cares for us, knowing that he loves us intimately and personally, he doesn't want us to suffer. In fact, the Bible says this, I love this. This is a, a true word. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In other words, the Bible says, yeah, we're gonna have to go through some suffering, which is persecution for the word's sake. But the Lord says, he is your shepherd, okay? And you will lack for nothing good. You will lack for nothing. That's what he says. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, when you know that, he's always thinking about you and that his thoughts are precious, that he's always thinking of you and how he can care for you intimately and personally, you can change the world. You can change this world. Psalm 139 verse 17 says this, how precious are your thoughts to me. Oh God, how precious are your thoughts to me. How great is the sum of them. Every grain of sand on, on every beach, that's the sum of all your thoughts for me. Now, God wants to ask you a question today. All of you that are listening today, why have you been satisfied without God's presence? It's everything. It's everything that you need. God's word and his presence is everything that you need. And we want to have friendship with God. Enoch walked with God and God took him. Enoch walked with God and the Bible says he was not. How would you like that? One day you're just having your quiet time with God and zap. You're not. You're with God. Well, the truth of the matter is this. We are a part of the kingdom of priests. And the Bible says this, whoa, I want to read this to you. This is from Exodus 19. It says, And Moses went up to God and the Lord and called to him from the mountain and said, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I led you on eagle's wings, how I actually bore you on eagle's wings, and I brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you will be a special treasure to me above all people. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Have you ever thought of yourself as holy, separate from evil? You are. You're separated from evil for intimacy with God, for fellowship with God. You're delivered today, just like the children of Israel were delivered out of Egypt to become a priest of the Most High God, a prized possession of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, John 15, verse 9 says this, As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. So abide in my love. I want to repeat that because you really need to think about it. As the Father loved me. This is Jesus speaking. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. In other words, God loves you as much as the Father loves Jesus. Wow. <laughs> Where is fear in that? There is no fear in that. And that causes us to want to obey His commands. And then we will be a friend of God. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person right now every person listening. Oh, Heavenly Father, may you heal the broken in heart. May you bind up their wounds today. 
May you open the windows of heaven for them to show them this grand opportunity that they have to be your friend. Lord, I pray that they would ask you into their life today. Would you just pray this prayer with me? Would you say, Jesus, Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, I open myself up to you. Forgive my sins, Lord. Cause me to be your friend. I want to walk with you. I want to speak with you. I want you to guide my steps. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining me today. And I pray that the fire of the Holy Ghost would overwhelm you each and every day until we meet again. God bless you, and I love you so dearly. Thank you. Lori and I want to thank you for watching today. If this video has blessed you, then subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. Also, click the thumbs up button and share this video with someone you know who needs to hear it. If you'd like to help us create more of these videos, like teaching videos, music videos, scripture narration, and our prayers to Jesus, then you can partner with us. Go to spiritlifechurch.com and click the Give button, or you can click on the link in the description below where it says Give a Love Offering. I want to pray for all of you, our subscribers, so please leave a comment or send me your prayer request by clicking on the link below. Would you let me pray for you today? We want you to be blessed and edified and that the Holy Spirit would touch your heart today. Heavenly Father, we just give you thanks. Both Tom and I thank God for all of you listening today and all of those that have subscribed and all of those that need something today. We pray that the love of Jesus would overwhelm you, that you would sense his presence right now, that you would know his anointing is here, that you would be blessed with every kind of spiritual blessing in heavenly places. It's already available. It's already yours. Now, I'm going to pray in Jesus' name that you receive them and that you walk in them and that you be blessed in everything you put your hand to. Thank you for joining us today, and we really believe in you. Thank you so much. We love you.